Hi, I'm Anthony Kingdom James, and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Anthony Kingdom James. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. Of Hi, course. Alicia. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, everybody in internet land. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we are here at Smash Wrestling, where yourself and Sebastian Suave will soon step into the ring as he is yes. facing Kaito Kiyomiya. Yeah. So how are you feeling about you what's going to go? You pronounced that so well. Why, thank you. Kaito Kiyomiya. You know, I, I, I fell down a flight of stairs trying to pronounce that name. <laughs> Let's hear it now. Kaito Kiyomiya. It's pretty damn I can good. only do that because I'm repeating what you said. <laughs> Five minutes from now, I'll just refer to It'll him as Ninja gone. Guy or something really mildly not savory. <laughs> well, how are you feeling about the match and everything that's going to go down tonight at the Opera House? I'm feeling great about the match. I mean, you know, poor guys here on excursion from Japan. I love the, the, the tradition of excursion. Japanese wrestlers going out into the world, Mexico, Europe, North America, and uh, getting uh, new experience, gaining experience that they couldn't get just being in their, their homeland. Um, but, Kaido, we're sending him home. Okay. It's, it's, excursion's over tonight. You see just a clear win? It's gonna all... Oh, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's Sebastian Suave. He's the endorsement. He's the guy you count on. So we're punching Kaido's ticket, and he's going home. Well, as you mentioned there, Sebastian Suave is the endorsement. You oversee a lot of those endorsements that come his way. But to you, what is that dream endorsement the person or the company would love to see behind the Sebastian dream Suave? dream endorsement. Oh wow! I don't know if I've thought about the dream endorsement. I I don't want to I don't want to set a goal that can't be. Huh? The dream endorsement. I mean, Swab's pretty great. I don't know if anything's unattainable. I I think you know you know they haven't started filming uh, Star Wars Episode Nine yet. That would be that would okay. be good. That would be a nice crossover. I would look sweet in Jedi robes. That's all I'm saying. I can envision that now. Yes. I'd have to agree. Yeah. <laughs> Or an imperial uniform, whatever. <laughs> whatever whatever works. I'm not going to be picky. <laughs> well, aside from the excitement of Smash, it's a super exciting time for you because Heroes are Homeroom C is yeah, officially look. out. Brand Ooh. new comic book. Ooh. Ooh. Love that. that was cute. That's product placement. <laughs> that, that was ready to go off camera and then boom. Now on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is my, uh, my new graphic novel. I, um, I had a dream years and years ago to write comic books and um, didn't in the mid 90s I was going to San Diego Comic Con thinking that I would be, become a professional comic book writer by osmosis you know by just being there and I didn't know what I didn't know and I put the dream away and I, I, I concentrated on wrestling for a long time and um, about five six years ago I just decided that I wanted to do this again and I started, I, uh, I wrote a series called uh, The First Hero, which is still, I'm going to get back to, but um, a few years ago I came up with this idea, and the elevator pitch is simple. Uh, twin 12-year-old superheroes lose their powers and their parents send them back to public school. And uh, started writing it, found an artist, great artist by the name of Carlos Granda, out of uh, Columbia, of all okay. places. We met at New York Comic Con. And um, we've been working on it in a few different iterations, and now there it is in print. Uh, in your hands. 76 pages of story, 96-page book. I'm already, I've already written 80 more pages. This is going to be a continuing thing. Okay. And, um, yeah. So, hey, come see me at a Smash show. I'll have them with me <laughs> for the foreseeable future or... Uh, on my website, my web store is uh, merchtableonline.com. At 15 bucks Canadian, 12 bucks American. Look at that plug. Plug well in like done. shilling like a professional. <laughs> I so, have to say, yeah. they're looking great as well. Yeah, they came Smash out really great. Really. Merch booth, too. So. They came out really. I'm very happy with the way it came out. We were talking about this months ago. So holding it in your hand right now, is that just a little real seeing it come to fruition finally? Um, yeah. You know what? I mean, I mean, I've had other comics come out. I mean, I've been doing this for like three years now mm -hmm. uh so you know i I've, I've had that experience of the first time something you know of mine went from brain to paper to yeah. print um but this is something different for me because this is uh this is the first book that i'm uh i'm you know publishing completely on my own um the first hero came out through a company called action lab 
And uh, now this is my, as you see the logo, uh, this is uh, me self-publishing as Aristocrats Comics. Uh, Aristocratscomics.com. Wink. Um, so it's, it's, something, it's something different. I didn't have, I didn't have you know, editorial or production people to, to fall back on. This was, you know, me from start to finish, finding an artist, getting, you know, getting the production done, you know, dealing with the printer, everything. And uh, this showed up at my place last week on a skid, on a, on a wooden pallet, 21 boxes of it. And it was like, <laughs> here's, here's 700 pounds of something that you created. Uh, so, yeah, so now everybody who helped kickstart it is going to be getting their copies uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then it's just, you know, uh, me hand-selling it at comic book conventions and, uh, and at, at smash shows and probably have a couple on me if you see me in the street. You know, <laughs> not, not going to lose an opportunity to make a sale. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Love the hustle. Aside from the comic book, I've seen you in the Smash Wrestling ring. And I yeah. have to say, you have the gift of the gab. You're absolutely amazing whenever there's a microphone in your hand. I am. Uh, I think it was Les Thatcher that said about me many years ago, I'm a leg drop in a promo. So, <laughs> and I'm, I'm old. I don't do the leg drop anymore. I need my hip. I need my hip. It's all about the promo. Yeah. So now it's the promo. When I retired, uh, I retired as a wrestler. And it was actually Brent Banks who's here today, Brent Banks, that retired me. My final match was uh, November of 2015 in, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, in Alpha One Wrestling out in Hamilton. Um, and uh, I, thought that I, I thought that that was me being done. And I'll tell you the, the, the actual, the real honest fact about it was um, I was taking care of my mother. Um, and I had, she retired and she was ill and I had moved her back from California. She had been living and working in California for like 15 years and I moved her back and I, as time was going on, she needed more and more time and attention. And, uh, so I thought, you know, these, my silly weekends away as more, as more weekends were being taken up by comic book stuff, conventions and stuff. I thought, okay, I'm, I need to put wrestling away. And I did. Uh, and then my mom passed away. I'm sorry. Well, you didn't do it. So, <laughs> unless you did. Pretty sure I didn't. Oh, okay. Then we're good. Then we're okay. Uh, but my, my mom passed away. And uh, a few months later, uh, some, some of my friends said, okay, uh, on my birthday weekend, it was like, okay, come on. You're going to come to this show and hang out. And uh, walked into the locker room and was like, Kingdom's here. Kingdom will do commentary. Okay. And started doing commentary again. And then uh, Sebastian Suave came a-calling. And I got the opportunity here for Smash Wrestling and, and haven't looked back. I've been ridiculously happy. I mean, um, you know, it's not like I was in on the ground floor at Smash Wrestling those, those first four years watching this you know, be, I wasn't part of this promotion growing, mm -hmm. but in the last year, it's leaps and bounds again, and I'm really proud that I've been a part of that. Me too. So, yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. I, I, I can barely think of a time in 29 years, 29, yeah, like 28 years involved in professional wrestling on and off. That this is, I'm, I'm happy. This has been fantastic. Just speaking to being great on the mic, I have a couple tweets here from you. Oh, shoot. Yep, that I would love to hear a little bit more about. Okay. All right. So hey, the look, first one. Your, your words are coming back to bite you in the ass, <laughs> Anthony. First one yeah. is, if cabs ignore you and drive past you, you should legally be allowed to throw shit at them, like yeah. a brick or water balloon filled with paint. Yeah. If it's three in the morning and you're standing on a, on a barren stretch of road and a cab drive just zooms past you and you're like, hey, you step out in the street and you're waving, mm -hmm. they just keep going. You said I could swear? That I did. Fucking throw a brick at them. <laughs> Fuck. I've actually had a cab approaching me. Light on, I wave, turns the light off, drives by, turns the light back on. Really? Fuck you. So hard. 
So, yeah, every once in a while I would, uh, I, I, I have, a thought, I have a thought like that. And thankfully I never plan to run for office so I can just express them on Twitter. <laughs> Not that anything stops you from running for office anymore. <clears throat> Sorry. I had something awful cut in my throat there. Well, for the next one, the I have... Orange hairball. Sorry, what were you going to say? <laughs> for the next one, it's probably my favorite one that you've sent out. Okay. So it's a good one. All right. It's, man, a lot of people in Mississauga have ugly kids. Beaten in the face with an ugly stick levels of ugly. Yeah. Um, you have to really appreciate <laughs> parents like that because what you don't understand is the ugly stick is very heavy. So just to pick it up, much less swing it five, six times at a kid's face. It's really, that's dedication. That's, that's them saying, I want my kid ugly as sin. And uh, yeah, Mississauga, Mississauga is not the worst place I've ever been, though. Mississauga is reasonable. Like, I've been to Blanchester, Ohio. And that is, it's a lot of, that town is, that town is where ugly was born. <laughs> If anybody watching this is from Blanchester, Ohio, hit me up on Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. It's been a while. My name is Kingdom on Twitter. Well, we were talking a few months back, and you mentioned DJing to me. Yes. And I wanted to know who are some people you know you can play that just get asses on the dance floor. Like, who are some of your go-tos? Okay. Well, first of all, you have a misconception about what I do for a living. Okay. I am not a nightclub DJ. I am not, I'm not a dance club DJ. I'm a strip club DJ. So it doesn't matter okay. what I play. There's going to be some ass involved. <laughs> I did not find that anywhere. Yeah. Really? I don't hide it. I don't hide it. Yeah, okay. I'm a strip club DJ. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Want to wanna know the two things I've, I've learned from strippers? In, of course. In the, there's only two valuable things I've learned from strippers, and you should know these things. One... Carry baby wipes with you everywhere. You don't think so. You're going to need one. And two, once you sleep with the sugar daddy, you need a new sugar daddy. And those are the two things I've learned from dancers. Lessons from Kingdom. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, music, uh, I had this conversation just like the other night with a, a girl at work. What I like as far as music goes has nothing to do with what I play. Um, because there's just, we have music restrictions at the club I work at. Okay. So there's just stuff I don't play. And girls think I'm picking on them or ta they, they, they take it personally that I don't, I won't play the music they ask for. I've had, oh. I've had at customers take it personally that I won't play certain music for them. I, 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 yeah, I'm, let's not get into <laughs> that. Uh, because there's a professional baseball player that I would still like to slap in his mouth. Um, let's not name names. Ask me in person. I'll tell you exactly who he was. BJ Upton. Anyways, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah, music. So music. there's... <laughs> what did I just say? So um, there's stuff that I love that I just can't play at work. And girls, girls take it really personally. But on the other hand, if it was up to me, Chris Brown wouldn't have a career because he's a scumbag and his music is awful. It's here's here's why you still know Chris Brown's name after all that Rihanna stuff, because a lot of popular music is product. It's worked out of a factory. It's worked out of a machine. And the corporation behind Chris Brown had spent enough money creating him that they did a cost investment analysis, whether they could rehabilitate him after the Rihanna incident or should they start again with some other fresh faced idiot who can sing a little but isn't very and dance but isn't very creative. So they salvaged Chris Brown's career. And that's why you still know Chris Brown's name. Not because he's a good talent, but because he can sing and dance and they've already invested time and money and product into him. Sounds like you've invested a little. <laughs> I play music for I play music full time for a living. So I have a lot of time in the DJ booth to think, why Am I playing Why this? are girls still asking me for Chris Brown? Okay. Well, you did mention that you can't play some of the stuff you would like to. So yeah. what, are those, what are those people, those, those artists? Oh, stuff that I would like to yeah. play? Stuff that I would like to play that I can't. I'd, I'd, if it were up to me, I'd be playing Run the Jewels every night. Okay. Here, put, do, do that. 
And then we go like that. Killer Mike and LP. Hi. <laughs> Um, I've wanted to do that. I wanted to get Sebastian to do that at one point. So. Okay. Uh, with a title belt, though. Um, I'd be playing. I'd be playing. Run the jewels. Um, at the end of nights, when it's uh, when it's like just break music, the last half hour of the night is just break music, and, and girls are still dancing. Every once in a while, I'll play a Willie Nelson song because I love Willie Nelson. Really. But have I have I ever played oh. Willie Nelson for a girl on stage? No. Yeah. No redheaded stranger during stage shows. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of stuff I'd like to play, but it's just not appropriate. I, if it were up to me, girls would be dancing to Miles Davis. <laughs> but you can't do that. I so. love that you shared that because I actually was looking around for things related to DJing and you and yeah. I never saw the strip club no, side I don't of do, it. No, I don't, I've never, the last time I, uh, the last time I played like a, a, a nightclub as yeah. a DJ is... 25 years ago at Sheridan College in Oakville, I, I, I used to do uh, I used to do occasional nights there, I, and it's just it, that's that's not me. Like I, I used to work in radio. I prefer talk radio to music radio, but I you know I DJed adult contemporary, and I you know I I DJed I DJed um, you know like uh, old timers music like uh, uh, standards like. Music of your life is, is the format that they call it often. Um, but I was never, I've never been a night, I'm never going to, I'm never going to match up beats per minute between two horrible songs by some Euro douche that you've never heard of. And, 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 and yeah, let's keep the party going. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I leave that to. Those I, air horns are the most aggravating thing. In I leave, music. I leave that to my boy Zima Ion. Shout out to DJ Z, baby. <laughs> so, uh. <sighs> Yeah, that's that's just not who I, I'm. A, I'm, a, I'm a radio guy. I got okay. into uh, I got into radio in college. My brother's a broadcaster. My brother's a, a, a TV broadcaster. Mostly, uh, well, he's a sportscaster. He he worked for uh, New York Islanders for years. He worked for the Colorado Avalanche for years. Um, CBC, TSN, CFTO here in Toronto, you name it. Now he does a lot of uh, uh, college, university sports, amateur, uh, you know, like uh, semi pro stuff uh, on the East Coast. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're a, we're a broadcasting family, right? <laughs> um, and, and that's why, you know, radio, TV, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with it because I've been doing some version of it since I was 18. Okay. So, yeah. Well, let's wrap things up. Is there anything you would like to leave with the fans who will be viewing? Any parting words? Uh, yes. My name is Kingdom, Anthony Kingdom James, the smartest man who ever lived. Um, yeah, I, I'll tell you uh, social media stuff. You can find me on Twitter at My Name is Kingdom. You can find my website at kingdomjames.com. And you can find my comic book stuff wah, uh, on Twitter at aristocratscmx and uh, aristocratscomics.com. And, uh, and all of it, my t-shirts, my comic books, all my stuff, you can find at uh, merchtableonline.com. And you can always find me here at Smash Wrestling. Of course. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. All and right. remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See ya.